Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 19044 Peppers from Romania. They have been on a hot streak this season, taking the winning alliance first pick at their first qualifier and getting ready for the Romania National Championship. They just had a blazingly fast teleop, one of the fastest robots I've seen this season with scoring, depositing, and taking just every single aspect of the game. And I'm really excited to take a deep dive into their robot today on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind-the-bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash updates now. Okay, guys, let's get started with your drivetrain. You guys are just so quick around the field. So talk about what went into making your drivetrain so fast uh, and, you know, give us some of the details. Uh, so first of all, our strategy uh, from the start of the season was to have a very small robot so we can maneuver easily be uh, between the junctions. That's why we went for modified uh, Gobilda Strafer chassis. That's 13.5 inch by 13.5 uh, inch with four um, um, mechanum uh, wheels and um, 435 RPM motor uh, that power each wheel. So you guys are running then the 13.7 to 1 ratio uh, for the drive train, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, we find out that that was the best uh, ratio for the speed to maneuver around the junctions. We actually don't run our motors at full speed. We actually need more diving practice to give it the, the max speed. So <laughs> I yeah. see. And so have you guys had any problems with like acceleration or anything like that? Or has it been like completely fine? Uh, we have a problem like when uh, every time our robot accelerates uh, our battery level drops down uh, but uh, apart from that uh, i think we didn't have any problems we had a problem when the uh, one of our odometry modules was too tensioned so mm -hmm. our uh, robot actually uh, lifted off the ground and uh, went uh, not didn't went straight when we drove it so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, you know, you brought up odometry, so let's talk about your software a little bit. What are you using for your autonomous pathing and path following, um, and how does that work? Uh, for the path following, we use Roadrunner, and uh, we actually use uh, simple splines. Uh, and uh, to for a good localization, we have two odometry wheels, uh, uh, three odometry wheels, and these are actually open odometry. Uh, with a bit of modifications to work with just 3D printed parts. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so now going on to your guys' claw, your guys' just intake and depositing procedure as a whole is one of the fastest I've seen this season. So walk us through what you're using for your claw, uh, and then we'll get on to the rest of your robot. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, as you can see, a very simple claw that uh, has some silicon mold because we found out uh, before test, uh, after text, testing with um, some um, uh, grippy materials, we found out this is the best, um, uh, let's say, gripping uh, material to, mm -hmm. uh, to hold the cones very firmly. Uh, so that's why uh, we opted for the silicon molds. And our cones just enter like this and the... Um, Claw picks it up if we can uh, show a bit. We leave the um, uh, we leave the lift or, or the elevator, and mm -hmm. here is a um, uh, distance sensor that uh, when it detects the cone, it uh, automatically cl closes the claw. That's why our our intaking of the cones is very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you guys are using this automatic. Uh, you guys are using the distance sensor just every single cycle. You have no issues with it at all. Uh, there was one issue when our sensor disconnected in the first match of the finals um, because our um, cable, uh, sensor cable wasn't um, holding there uh, pretty efficiently, mm -hmm. but we later uh, fixed it. Since then, we have uh, actually done a rewiring, so everything is uh, good. Uh, but we actually run uh, two different filters on our sensor uh, because of uh, accelerations on the robot and the signals 
from the cable. We actually get false signals sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we uh, actually have uh, one filter to remove the false signals from the in, uh, from the intake sensor uh, and the filter that uh, uh, actually uh, dampens the readings from the sensor because they are sometimes so random. Got it, got it. And so now moving on to your virtual four bar, I can see like, uh, you know, it's very, very fast, just pivots right around to the back of the robot. So walk us through the construction of it, uh, you know, if it's changed at all throughout the season and how it works. Uh, yeah, so our virtual four bar kind of remained the same uh, from the start of the season, but we needed to skeletonize it to get it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, we actually have three surgical tubing that, uh, uh, for a counter spring. Mm -hmm. So if I stop the robot right here, you can see that uh, the counter springs almost perfectly hold the virtual four bar without the motor putting any power in it. So uh, this helps us uh, to get this uh, virtual very fast. Uh, so if I run this, you can see that uh, it, it is almost instant. Yeah, and so uh, from like an electrical standpoint and like an actuator standpoint, what are you using to power your virtual four bar? Um, and do you have any plans to like change this at all? Uh, so for states, we actually used GoBuilda speed servers and actually worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, but for nationals, we changed to some servers we found on Amazon and actually found that uh, a lot of teams were using them, mm -hmm. which have the torque of GoBuilda torque servers and the speed of GoBuilda speed servers, uh, just for redundancy in in case of the in case one of our surgical tubing breaks. Yeah, that that's fantastic. And so I'm very interested in the materials you guys have selected for your virtual floor it seems the vast majority of it is 3d printed so was this decision more influenced by um just like the materials you guys use in general and like that you have access to or was there a very specific reason for 3d printing the virtual floor bar i think the main reason is that we have four 3d printers and uh, not a cnc machine mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also CAD all everything on our robot so because we CAD everything on our robot and have four 3d printers it's more more is it's very easy to iterate every part of the robot and you can see that not only the four bar but uh, most of the parts on the robot are 3d printed sure Sure. And so now talking about your lift a little bit, I see you guys have looks like Misumi slides. Um, so walk us through what what you're using for that, what motor ratio you're using and how that's worked out for you. Um, yeah, we are we have um, four slide uh, for um, uh, Misumi slides uh, 230, I think. Uh, and with uh, 435 RPM motors, um, we tried to change um, for uh, uh, states or nationals uh, with two uh, 1,100 uh, uh, motors, uh, but uh, our command didn't arrive and um, the states are next week, so that's uh, unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I've seen a lot of teams um, complaining about the 435 motors, that they are too slow. Uh, so that's why we, we chose these um, bigger pulleys uh, than for the ones from the GoBuilders to have more speed in the lift. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, uh, the lift moves pretty fast at yeah, yeah. every level. Yeah, and so I see also like from a programming perspective, I see that right now your lift is just stationary. So is this some software that's holding the lift in place or do you guys have a mechanical feature like counter springing that is keeping the lift in place right now? Uh, we actually, uh, for states, we tried some contact springing, but uh, we found out that uh, the retraction wasn't as instant as we wanted mm -hmm. because uh, 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 very fast retraction helps us uh, put uh, cones on the low poles almost instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, we didn't go for contact springing, so the motors just hold their position with a PID loop that just uh, adjust the motor powers every loop. And, yeah, yeah, sure. And I think one of the most unique parts of your guys' robots or what really helps you guys in, in Teleop and Autonomous is your guys' junction aligner. So talk a little bit about that, if it's changed at all this season with the new rules coming out and how it works. Uh, so for our, let's say, first uh, record, uh, the two fifth, uh, we had a 215 point. We used a uh, V-shaped um, uh, aligner 
And uh, why we wanted to have an aligner uh, is uh, we've seen a lot of teams in America uh, have something that just uh, knows uh, when the junction, uh, where the junction is, and it helps their lift. But because our wheels are four bar and we had this uh, channel in the back, we didn't have any ideas. So that's why we opted for this. Uh, let's. Uh, more uh, different uh, aligner uh, with two uh, Misumi uh, 220 slides that have uh, that are powered by a linkage, and uh, this is our third uh, uh, pole alignment or junction alignment. Um, the first one, as I said, was a V-shaped one, then um, not so V-shaped one, a U-shaped one, let's mm -hmm. say, and now this uh, that's uh, just the um, beyond the, uh, the radius cone. Radius. Of the cone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I see you guys have uh, some color distance sensor there. So how do you use it uh, and how has it been working out for you? Uh, yeah, so uh, first we wanted to put a color sensor for a not automatic release because we saw that uh, automatic intaking was uh, so efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, but we found out that uh, it didn't work so well because the color sensor gives us very noisy readings. Mm -hmm. But we found out that uh, if we just lower the lift when the color sensor sees the pole, uh, the robot automatically aligns the cone with the pole and also signals the drivers that they can release the cone. And uh, uh, so we can like uh, drive our robot at the end of the field and uh, see from the other end of the field if we are ready to release. Sure. And so what's the reasoning behind uh, not automatically releasing as well after you've lowered onto the junction? Uh, while testing, we saw that uh, because of read, uh, noisy readings, sometimes uh, the robot would release and uh, sure. it wouldn't be just right uh, on the pole. Uh, so uh, if you just uh, if the robot, okay. Uh, you can see that if the junction moves uh, around this point, the readings could be very noisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, that yeah. makes complete sense. And so, Peppers, I think one last thing I want to talk to you guys about is your guys' driver practice. I mean, just seeing you guys move on the field is insane. It's just so incredible. So tell the community, please, a little bit how you guys practice, if there's anything you think that's really special that will help a lot of teams out there, or if it's something in your controls or just pure driver skill at the end of the day, what makes you guys so good? So uh, after the first Quantum League uh, in Romania, we had a very, um, uh, let's say, not so good robot, not a very, a very competitive one, just uh, Misumi slides that uh, lift up a claw and that's it. And we realized that uh, we need a lot of practice to... Um, have a very competitive robot, even if, if it's might it, if it might be a very, let's say, um, simple one. So that's why we uh, rushed a bit for the next scrimmage, uh, our first prototype of the robot, and then um, we there we won a winning alliance first pick, and uh, from uh, uh, on there we just practiced a lot, so we mm -hmm. can be as. But also what a lot of people don't realize is uh, that a lot of uh, tasks on our robot are automized. Mm -hmm. So uh, like our drivers have only the need, need to only uh, move the joy joysticks to uh, drive the robot around the field, press three buttons to lift to the correct uh, height and uh, one button to release. That's everything our drivers need to do. So. Uh, it's we just practice driving the robot around and then everything was easy after that. Yeah, and, and also automate uh, everything we can so we can reduce the human error as uh, much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peppers, thank you so much. This has been just a fantastic interview. I'm sure there's so much to learn from you guys. You just have such a blazingly fast scoring machine. So thank you so much. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 19044 Peppers from Romania. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com first to register your team. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. 
We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.